I watched uh, the first half of Free Willy on a flight recently. Oh, no. Yeah. I have really terrible associations with that movie. Do you? Yeah. What is that? Was that the day you got shot in the face? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> You've I, literally I, been shot in the face. I've been shot in the face. We're going to be yassified the whole time. <laughs> yeah. and I don't know which. There, there, there's my camera. I guess that's your camera. That's the wide and that's that one. Okay, so for the editor, if you could just match my freak. This and the <laughs> yeah, for once. Jesus. And this will come out in nine months, so that, that'll be a really topical song <laughs> reference. <laughs> okay, yeah, perfect. People are gonna love that. They're I'll gonna make sure to make a loving. lot of references to current events. One hundred percent. Great. Um, okay, let's just get started. Because the sooner we start, the sooner we're done. All right, well. My parking meter is running out as we speak. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's go. Hi, we're here. You're listening to the Sorry What podcast with your host, Jared Goldstein. This is a advice podcast uh, from a bad listener. I'm unqualified. I am uninterested. And yet I am here to help. And I have my esteemed guest with me today. It's Finn Argus. Yay. Hi. I'm here. Uh, I'm famously a good listener, but my left ear doesn't work. So don't ask for advice from this side of my head. Okay, great. Is it um, okay? Like, is it oh my poor God, form to drink no, my do it. ice latte? <laughs> that's, I personally, and this again, that's like a preference thing, but I love that. Like okay. when I listen to a podcast and the hosts are eating or drinking. <laughs> no, li I'm not even You're kidding. You're serious? I like it. Like, it makes me feel like I am having lunch with my friends. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I just started recording a podcast with my best friend, Chris Renfro. Who oh my you God. Know. Okay, great. And our producer. So we're was, actually enemies. So we're actually, yeah, we're sort of competitors in huh. a way. <laughs> in the market. Yeah. So yeah, good luck, so we both have babe. briefcases and only one of us <laughs> can win. No, there's actually only one briefcase in between us and we're going to have to and fight our head, to the one death One headshot is, is in the briefcase <laughs> and we're going to yeah. find out. It's sort of like an AI blob of both of our faces on the headshot. Okay. Wait, what's your podcast? Oh, it's called One of Us. It's a okay. best friend force. We're journeying through the universe to try to build our best friend force and ultimately take over the world. Are you looking for more best friends? Yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, if and they I wasn't don't pass asked the test, to appear on the podcast. Actually, you are on our short list, so. It better be a short list. You're cornered now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Asking you live on pod, you should be one of us. Okay. Well, that'll, it's yet to be seen because we need to interview you. Figure out if you're worthy. And also, I'm busy. Well, I'm pretty busy. You're so super I don't. I'm, well, I don't even know if I have time. So you're so actually. I'm checking the calendar. No, it looks this, like actually, this actually we can't pencil you in. I think we're almost in. done with the episode. And that's a wrap. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks. Definitely don't Bye. listen to Finn's album dropping in September. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> Good. You want to talk about that at all? Yeah, I make indie rock. It's kind of like Phoebe Bridgers' Boy Genius. I'm a sad girl with a guitar. And I am so happy with how this music's turning out. It's been a while since I put music out. I kind of went into a cocoon to, um, I don't know, get more in touch with who I am as a person. And that includes transness and like my own creativity and lyrical voice. Uh -huh. And now I feel like I am blossoming as a beautiful moth musically. Incredible. In, in many ways. A Christina Aguilera fighter. Mm -hmm. Remember that video? No, I actually don't know what you're talking about. I was just going <laughs> to nod in. Okay, so Christina Aguilera was a girl who sang songs. <laughs> okay, so actually that much I do know. Yeah. But what is the song? Okay, so she had a song called Fighter. Uh, Thanks for I making me. Uh, is that one? No. Oh, that I'm a survivor. Else. That's something. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying yeah. so hard right That was now. a different song. Okay. And that actually was incorrect. But not, was it by Christina Aguilera, though? Was like, I think it might have been um, Reba. Is that a Reba song? I'm it's a Reba survivor. song. It is, yeah. Being a single <laughs> mom who works two But jobs. again, another, yeah, that's, that is another singer. Okay. Um, but she um, has red hair, and Christina Aguilera has uh, blonde hair, and sometimes black streaks in the blonde hair. Kind of, that's kind of the major difference there. Very cool. But she had a song called Fighter, which was a really fun song, and in the video, she, um, she enters a cocoon, and at the end, she comes out, and that bitch is a moth. <gasps> Yeah, you thought she was gonna be a butterfly? No, she's tough. She's cool. You don't, you don't, you don't see it coming. You can't guess what she's doing. She's I really a moth. Get that. 
Yeah, I'm, my fingers are crossed that my estradol turns me into a moth. <laughs> yeah, I'm so Woo! excited. Um, I just watched um, Godzilla, uh, and it wasn't the one with Mothra, but it made me really want to watch the one with Mothra. Yeah, right. I feel like I know what you're talking about. Yes. But I'm loving all these references. So keep them coming. And sure. One of these times, I'm going to get it. 100%. And honestly, like that is an experience that is really familiar to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you just kind of smile and just keep blinking, people like you, you can, for the most part, you can get away with not knowing what the f- someone is talking about. Sorry also, I life. just spent the weekend editing some of these and it's the, it is the weekend. It is certainly not Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I need a real job. I don't know what day it is ever. That's the cool thing about having a podcast is you don't need a concept of time. <laughs> yes, space. you decide when the weekend is. And there are no windows in here, so it could be could be any day of the month. Yes. It could be any year, really. Well, I think I, I would argue that it is September of 2024 and your album is dropping. It yeah, exactly. If Running I had to guess if I had on all guess. streaming services now, I hope. <laughs> yes. Um, but what was I saying? We were talking about eating on podcasts and then something happened. Oh, that was a while ago. That was years ago. But my point oh, was oh, going oh, to be okay, my yours. producer was vehemently against us drinking, eating on pod. Which oh. I, listen, I really get it because when I listen to podcasts and people are chomping, not for me. You don't like it. But I do, however, love the sound of, course, of an iced it? latte. How about a little sizzle of a. Is that translate you know just a little yeah, bit a little a little asmr yeah i, think I can get okay. into it i think it's nice also for the most part podcasts are free mm-hmm. so if you don't like what you're hearing then you maybe join the patreon join the patreon and then at that point that's you where can the tell good me episodes what. that's are. actually a great incentive <laughs> to if, if there's something on this pod that you don't like join the patreon and it'll change and then you say the word, you say, if you're a Patreon member, you say jump. I say, how high? Great. I'm going to try that. Okay. I'm going to see what I can get you to do. Yeah. Do it. Oh my God. Literally do it. Um, but what I was saying was, um, uh, spending some time editing these and having to go through and, and catch every time anyone cursed. <gasps> oh, are we not allowed to curse? No curse as much as you want. Okay. Yes, I'm, you I can do good. it as much as you that want. Was great. But I can you, you bleep know. all that though? Oh, I'm we trying literally to have to friendly. because of YouTube. YouTube <gasps> is a bunch of babies. Oh, that's right. It's a bunch of babies on there. Wow, that's thrilling. Yeah. So this this will be clean. Okay. You great. can show this to your niece. I'm gonna show it to mine. You could show it to advertisers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. McDonald's. Hey, Mickey D's. Check Walmart. this out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Check us out. Um, Okay, should we get into, let's get into one voicemail. Yes, I'm ready. And then just kind of go from there. Yeah, I feel qualified. Okay, let's headphones do it. on. Let's roll it. <clears throat> Hi, Jared. I am calling for a friend who has a hemorrhoid. And she, I mean, they have never had one before and they're not quite what to do about it or where it came from. And um, frankly, it's alarming. It's alarming to look at and to feel on your anal hole. And, um, you know, as, as a gay man as yourself, such as yourself, I thought you might have some expertise in that area and know what I can do to make it go away. Um, and hopefully quickly before, I mean, you know, not for me, not for my Mm-mm. butt, but for theirs, Mm-mm. my Mm-mm. friends. So any advice regarding hemorrhoids is much appreciated. Have a great day. Okay. And this is why, why I almost said steroids because of hemorrhoids. Stereotypes <laughs> are hurtful. Important and helpful. Oh, because hurtful. I have never had a hemorrhoid. Mm. Look, I've had, I have a lot of problems. I have a lot of issues, but hemorrhoids are not one of them. Okay. Well, then it's good that you invited me here today. Have, do you, is that, is that, are you of hemorrhoid experience? <laughs> um, I guess you could say that. It wouldn't be true, but you could say it. Oh, okay. Um, I just have had some... Okay, so here's what's going on. You're just a registered this, nurse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually getting my doctorate right yes. now uh, in my off time between recording the album. podcasts. Yes. Yeah. Um, so... This voicemail, first of all, hi. 
Um, you didn't say hi to me, but I'm just going to go ahead and say hi back anyway. Uh, I'm trying to figure out. So this is about this is about someone else. This is about a yes, friend. Yes, this is not the caller. This, this is, is the not the caller. Of the caller. This caller, is their the she caller's slash butthole they is friend. like is perfect tight and smooth and there is zero inflammation pristine condition yes in terms of anus um first of all i feel for y- your friend um i recently thought that i had a hemorrhoid oh and i it was just, a skittle <laughs> i actually <laughs> just forgot i had put a bag of skittles yes. up my butt yeah you know what they say taste the rainbow it's like, <laughs> sort of like that but different anyway um i ultimately did not have a a hemorrhoid but i did however get a bunch of i did however get a bunch of treatment for hemorrhoids (gasps) okay i have a lot of experience in this in sort of treating things that aren't happening oh yeah sort of my life actually wow but um i could not recommend enough the little cream that (laughs) is that preparation age I didn't get preparation H. Um, they gave you creme fraiche. I I have I have a friend who has a lot of experience with hemorrhoids. Okay. And and at this point, they're sort of a pharmacy at, of their own. Actually, though, they've been helping me a lot this year. Shout out! I'm not going to say their name. I feel like they don't want that. Yeah. But thank you so much for all your recommendations. I should. I feel like I should pull up. We're not trying to like brand this. We're, uh, this person uh, is in the hospital. They want help. They need help right now. Okay. Oh, oh no. They're in the ICU. Oh my God. Okay. So whatever you need to pull up. I my phone's over there. Go get your phone. I'm gonna go get my phone. Y'all, okay. In I'll the meantime, right I'll talk about um, things that I have treated that I did not have: scabies, herpes. End of list. <laughs> yeah, I have a bottle of Valtrex at home that I cannot return. So if anyone <laughs> needs Valtrex, come over. Um, also, I, I did not have scabies. I had carpet beetles. Um, but a, a, a doctor, you know, when wait, you're getting... were they in your skin? The carpet beetles? Yeah. Wait, no, they were a in a beetle? plant that I had bought. Oh. They're just beetles that, like, g- genuinely, like, or general is the word I was looking for, um, like, uh, land in uh, carpeting. And they also you they know, bite you? suck blood and bite. Oh, no. um, and um, I don't have a carpet, but I do have pubes. And they did find That's their sick. way to my to there, and they and they did really go to town. So one day I woke up and I was just a burning fire of itching, That's and it was terrifying. only right there. So I, I understand why a doctor would go. You probably have scabies. Scabies. Um, but also, when you're gay and you go to the doctor, they 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 are they really want to tell you you have an STI. Okay, actually, that they is really very want true. To tell you. I actually I recently got treated for a little something something, and they gave me the medication preemptively yeah. before I got my results because they're like, oh, it's yeah. called presumptive care, which I I do understand and appreciate. Yeah, totally. I did not have what they were treating me for though, <laughs> and so. The medication just like messed it was the with zoomies. my body. It was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't stop running around the doctor's office. But <laughs> yeah. to be fair, the doctor was holding a little toy in front of me and dangling. Uh, okay, it my face. So see, it's it's really twenty twenty. It's hindsight. Yeah, not my fault. At the end of the day. <laughs> and that's how that expression goes. You go twenty twenty. It's hindsight. <laughs> twenty twenty. It's hindsight, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I figured it out. So the brand is Natacura Alleviate. Okay. Um, and I got it's Italian. Uh, I don't speak Italian, but I would guess so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it is. I got the ointment, which honestly, even if you don't have a hemorrhoid, I feel like you should try. <laughs> it's a really pleasant experience. Oh. It's sort of like a minty, fresh, kind of like in the way people drink espresso in the morning. It's like, whoo, I'm awake. Oh. If you just sort of, you know, yeah, lather it up and whoo. Yes. It's, it's like, like a oh, menthol. Let's start the day. It's like, a, like if we just pop a Ricola up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which I've also done. <laughs> God, <laughs> I morning. love Ricola. So I got that. And then I also got, um, oh, something that they recommend is a lot of fiber. You know, so, All right. you know, whatever is exiting your body. What do you get like, fiber from besides like a fiber bar or like a fiber cereal? What has fiber in it? You're just serious. Uh, okay, so like vegetables. Vegetables have fiber in it. 
vegetables have fiber in it and then like beans okay are beans vegetables no beans are beans legumes legumes uh. <laughs> i'm so sorry um i i'm currently taking um a painkiller for my shoulder uh that is making me extremely gassy um but not farting only burping mm. what does that mean what uh, is the difference between a burp and a fart like in the body is it just uh, lower or higher? I think it's the same gas, but one version of the gas has passed through your colon. <laughs> but if so one time you bad. accidentally burped out like fart gas, <laughs> and you yeah. could taste it. Oh. Oh my. Oh. <laughs> that just hit me like a truck. Wow. Isn't that, I mean, there's so I many horrors in the nightmare. world, but to, to realize in real time that that is not one of them, you know, God is good. Oh, wait, that's actually... God is yeah. real. <laughs> God is good. And oh wait, that was all really the time. Game on my part. Yeah, that never works for someone who cannot land a high five. That this is that's even that's a very you know that's a bullseye. <laughs> this feels so intimate. And this again, is this is, people... we're gonna we're gonna blur <laughs> where the fingers are touching. This is what life is like for people who haven't had hemorrhoids. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. It's every day we wake up and it's easy. It's just easy like this. Yeah. One hundred percent. Um, oh, this was the finger I used this morning, by the way. And, and that's what, that's what, minty. Mm -hmm. You weren't kidding. Mm. Woo! That's horrid. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I did recently have a staph infection. Whoa, wait. And that's I just like, outed myself for that. You know, I, I didn't have to reveal that. What, what is it? What is, what's going on with a staph infection? I, I really don't know. You still don't know? Uh, kind of. It's a bit of a mystery. Uh, I just gave it to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, what um, is it? And what is it like attacking in your body? It can be anywhere. Oh, it, it, it's one of those things where it's like, it's, it's it, because it was in the news for like sweeping like schools. You you feel like it's this really crazy thing, and it kind of is. But it's also like, it's staff. The the bacteria of staff is all over us all the time. We're covered in staff all the time, but it just doesn't infect us all the time. And once in a while, if you just get cut the wrong way or something, it just does. And again, this is a medical podcast and uh, this is this is uh, information uh, straight from the government to your ears. From the federal? From the federal. Yeah. This is from the federal. Um, yeah, I got a staph infection. I think my, my dermatologist thought it was from like a razor because it was all over my neck. Oh. And it was really, I'm very lucky. I get, I'm very often breaking out in some sort of pussy sore. Um, that's why um, a doctor thought it's scabies. That's why a doctor thought it herpes. Um, I've had acne my whole life. I, I get plenty of canker sores. I am just truly like my body cannot stop creating content. <laughs> I'm like, I just, I look at people who just like have like flat skin. And I'm just like, what is that like? I would, I would love to know what that is like. Well, right, because how are you going to get people to stay engaged, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's In this yeah. day and age, you really need to, like, be pumping It's engagement. And if you yeah. aren't covered in, like... I don't have scabies. I have a, a latest reel, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, I would, I would love less engagement from my skin. I would love to unplug from my skin. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be nice. I feel you. I'm very sick of shaving. I wish I didn't have facial hair. Wait. I get razor bumps all the What? Yes. I was just talking on a, a couple episodes ago um, about wanting, <laughs> wanting Ele laser. Electrolysis? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Same. But it seems really intense. It is. Yeah. It's a long process, which is why I haven't done it. I don't, I think I, I don't. I, it, my desire to not have hair on my face hasn't outweighed the cost and then like pain that comes from electrolysis yeah but it's so worth it for so many people so definite recommend if that's something that's important to you i've I never really i it, think but. about it and then everyone goes no you don't want that and i'm like you don't know me <laughs> oh yeah I, i've been you don't there. know me i've been so there. shut up people tell me don't laser remove your chest hair like what stake do you have in this literally game? what are you what is this big are you big chest hair like kind of no know. i meant the person telling oh me <laughs> And again, we're going to blur that. Well, that'll Please. be blurred. This is private information. <laughs> um, I am. You have a, your social security number tattooed. On your <laughs> doesn't everyone? How else would you remember it? Oh, my God. Now, that's a dystopian little future. Yeah, but it's backwards. So when I look down, I just. Yeah. You have to be in front of a mirror to see it. Yeah. That way, people looking at me can't quite tell what it is. 
I'm so sorry that my caller, who is definitely not my friend, who I know, <laughs> um, has hemorrhoids. Yeah. That's a bummer. And I will say, when I thought I had a hemorrhoid, I was really upset ab- about it. Um, ultimately, I'm upset about what is happening to my body. Yeah. But it isn't a hemorrhoid. But it's different. It's different, and that's private. And that's There's private so many different ways for our bodies to go haywire that it's like it really is every time like whenever i get like a sty again content <laughs> whenever i get a sty i'm like how do i not always have a sty yeah do you I, ever think about that like w- totally. when anything with goes canker wrong sores and, yes with me oh my gosh i'm like why is this not every day like how is my body i'm amazed that my body ever works start to finish a whole day it doesn't anymore. <laughs> so we got there. <laughs> we got there. You give out halfway. Yes. Um, but it is amazing. It is amazing that, that we're not all just covered in infections constantly. Yeah. I, think, I think a lot of us are. And I think it's time we talk about that. Yeah. I think it's time we talk about the fact that we're all infected with the sickness that is capitalism. I don't know what. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Smash cut to where Mickey you're listening, D's ad. <laughs> I would never criticize. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. If you want to pay me, I, I'm, did you see my body language? I'm kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> Will not be associated. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Um, okay. Shall we take another voicemail? Uh, yeah. From I'm ready. the McDonald's Corporation. Yes, please. Yeah. Hey, Ronald. How you doing? See, it's a fun sound. Wait, put it in the thing. I like it. <laughs> I do too. Yeah. Hi, Jared. Thanks so much for uh, offering advice. Um, I have an issue with my gums on my teeth. I have receding gums because apparently I brushed my teeth too hard. And I've, I've had this issue for years. Uh, I had a dentist tell me to stop brushing my teeth so hard like five years ago. But I guess I didn't stop. Um... So now I have to get a surgery that I guess pulls the gums down and kind of maybe uses some of the, like, upper gum flesh to to fill in the gums that are missing. Um, I'm not entirely sure on the science of it, but it sounds scary, and it also costs, like, $3,000. And I'm also worried my teeth are going to look weird after Um, Because it's not so noticeable yet, but I'm also, every day I'm scared that they're going to recede further. So I'm curious if you think I should get the surgery or if there's another alternative or if my insurance will cover it. Um, Thank you so much. Okay, well, let's just quickly do a lot of medical research. (laughs) As two dentists. um, Wait, I do actually feel like um, I'm a dentist head and I feel like I can get in on the mix here okay is this a medical podcast this is okay this is sorry what md okay great yeah. it's a good thing i'm actually becoming a doctor right yeah now. yeah um okay so yes we should not be brushing our teeth that hard mm-hmm. um we see it in movies and people are they're going this way they're going side to side Scratch. which is incorrect Scratch. do you know do you know how to properly brush your teeth <laughs> was that Explain, explain a little more. <laughs> you know, like when you take the toothbrush, let's say this is the toothbrush. I go, <laughs> you know, you get. You've been doing it wrong. I know. No one wants to hear this. No, wait. Wait, but here's the thing. Now I can, t- I can tell. But my dentist s- told me how to do it. He lied. Here's the thing. Sometimes your, your dentist will tell you how to floss and then they will floss you incorrectly in front of your face in your mouth. Okay. And you're going, you just told me how to do this and you're doing it wrong. Why? What is happening? Can okay. you give me a quick rundown? Yes. Okay. So this is how you brush your teeth and then I'll show you how to floss. So, okay. So imagine, okay. So imagine that like. This, these are the bristles, and okay. your teeth are here. These are your teeth, these are your gums, and this is the brush. What you need to do is you need to be brushing like that. You need the At bristles to be pointing in towards like the space between your teeth where your teeth meet your gums because you want to get up inside of that. But again, not hard, but you do. On your bottom teeth, you want to tilt the brush down towards your gums, and on the top teeth, you want to tilt them up towards your gums and then the motion that you want to do is soft circles whoa so when you're when you're doing your top teeth you're going like this 
And honestly, if you're if the if the bottom of your teeth are just kind of chilling out, that's fine. Sure, hit them. You will. But what you the whole point of brushing the teeth is brushing where the teeth meets the gums. So you're doing that, and then on the bottom you're going like that, soft circles all around. And then you also need to do the other side. The other side. Okay, this um, I do. I I get yes, both sides. Hit both sides. For sure, hit both sides. Angle towards the gums, soft circles, and the kind of toothbrush you... I don't even know why they make hard toothbrushes is extra soft. Really? You want to use an extra soft toothbrush. Okay. Yeah, mine's hard. Yes. I'll tell you what, it's hard. Everyone loves a hard toothbrush, and they're going... I don't. I just I do with what I get for Christmas. My parents always give me toothbrushes for Christmas. That's cute, but yeah. are you only using one toothbrush all year? Well, no, but I get a pack. It's like a pack of bamboo brushes. Oh, okay, sick. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, you're going to want to... But they're really hard. I should probably get a new, like a... What Do you use like a, me- a mechanical, like the electric... Like I don't know. You, you're probably good. They say it's better, but, you know, it's like life. Life is it's happening all around us. Mm-hmm. I don't... Like, they also tell you get the water pick. And look I at me. I have one of those. Do you, I heard do it in the shower, and that's really smart. Get a portable one, use it in the shower. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm scared of the electricity. What I don't kind are you? Zapped. Oh, I guess that's, I didn't think about that. What kind are you using? Uh, are you, like what? Brand a water model? Pick. Like, is it, is it the kind where there's like a bucket and then a stick? And you're No, it is actually a portable thing. Like, oh, okay. I could bring it in the shower, and it would probably be fine. Um, like a dumbass, I bought the full-blown one. Because my dentist was like upselling me, and I was like, "Sure." They're like, "Your your teeth are your gums are rotten. You're like the millimeters between this is how much he kind said of, this of a to dentist you? I am." Well, my okay, so the millimeter they measure the millimeters between your gum and your teeth, and it's it's somewhere it's the perfect world. It's like zero. There's no distance between your gum and your tooth, but that's not normal. Um, so it'll be like point one millimeters 0.2 millimeters 0.3 millimeters 0.4 all the way to like 0.8 and like once you're in the 0.5 through 0.8 millimeters you're in you're at risk of like gingivitis of like receding gums and you really want to like floss to make sure that everything is clean and inflammation goes down and that it's really tight your gums are tight against your teeth i'm literally a dentist i go to my dentist and they'll i'll talk to them and i'll be like it's tooth 14 and they like look up at me and they're like why do you know that? And I'm like, because I'm here a lot. You've and I listen. Research. That's the one thing I do listen. I listen to my dentist. I listen to no one else. My wow. friends can't tell you any of their names. But but my tooth 14 and everything my dentist tells me. And then I use it against them later. <laughs> I am I really, I walk into my dentist's office. And, you know more and they, about. They are on their best behavior. You know more about teeth than they do. Say it on pod. I know more about teeth than they do. Wow. They all start falling out. <laughs> I have that dream a lot. Do you? I do too. I, I've I've had um, a lot of teeth drama throughout my life. You have same. Yeah. yeah. What's going on? Well, the big one. Well, I had so many cavities when I was a kid. Same. I was eating candy like it was my job. And then in sixth grade, and eating vegetables was your job. Rah, rah, rah. And you I, weren't doing your job. Well, I mean, that was yeah, that was my job. But <laughs> yeah, I did it was not. The, you know, the recession. <laughs> it, you know, two thousand eight was rough. I'll be honest. Um, but. I also got my, these two front teeth, fake. <gasps> Can you believe? They look so real. Um, oh my God, amazing. But my, uh, my like childhood best friend brought over, oh, I don't want to, whatever, I won't say his name. Yeah. He came over to my house in like also, sixth grade. Also, uh, we're not airing this episode, so. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is just for us. Right, yeah. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> um, so he came over, and it was like the summer before sixth grade and he had just gotten back from Wisconsin on a road trip with his family and he got an airsoft gun. They were illegal in Illinois. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) But he, he brought one back from Wisconsin and he brought it over to my house. I wasn't allowed to play with airsoft guns. My parents were like very smart gun go off. I feel the same way into adulthood. A kid should not have an airsoft gun. That's so crazy. It was wild. And actually I am the face of anti airsoft gun because, uh, he brought this gun out of, out of his backpack in my bedroom. And I'm like, what is that doing here? Sir? Yeah. And he was like, oh, Your TSA. Don't <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I was like, I'm not allowed to play with those. And he was like, oh, <laughs> come on. It doesn't matter. The safety's on. Points it right at my face. No! Bow. 
and my lip ripped open and my teeth shattered onto the floor in front of me. Like truly like confetti. It was terrifying. Bleeding everywhere. And I was in shock, so I didn't cry or anything. But then he immediately was like fully sobbing into my bed. <laughs> and my mom, I, <laughs> my mom comes in and is obviously freaking out. She's like, what happened? My tooth shattered all over the ground. She's like, pick up your teeth, pick up your teeth. And I can't because they're in little pieces. You know, your mom's always yelling at you, pick up your teeth. <laughs> Pick up your teeth. <laughs> but she was like, we need to put it in milk and then bring it to the dentist so oh! they can reassemble it. I think we're all just very confused <laughs> and scared. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> but my God. And then, and then fully... your dad accidentally drinks the glass of milk. <laughs> oh, no. It was horrible. And we did fully go to the dentist with my shattered teeth in a bag of milk. And w were, was the, were the doctors really glad that the teeth were in milk? No, they said throw it out. Is that Yeah, that's not There's a There's nothing you can do with... His shattered pieces because it wasn't even like it was big chunks yeah it was just like it was like fine dust particles really it's like it, when a digimon dies exactly <laughs> i just my teeth went <sighs> back to the digital world <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, terrible uh so i did have a, a fake like it was actually only half of and how old were you when this happened i was uh 11 like Whoa. about to be 12 and those were your teeth those, those were my adult teeth, yeah. And you just got them. Yeah, they were brand new. There was, it was actually their first night on the town. Okay, so okay, they were looking I, cute too. I, by the I'm way, I'm kind of wondering, like, how did, how did the parents kind of deal with the aftermath of this? Um, well, you know, they were upset with my friend, which is so fair. I didn't, I wasn't really upset with him. Yeah. But hey, eye for an eye. Get over but, here. No. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we were kids. We were stupid kids. I didn't hold it against him. But his parents were so mad at him. And there was, like, just, like, a, a rift. Like, I wasn't allowed to hang out with him for a bit. But we're still good friends. Like, I see him when I go back to Chicago for holidays. Whoa. And my parents are friends with his parents. It's all good. We worked it out. I have two fake teeth now. It's, it's fine. Fake tooth bitch? Yeah. <laughs> and what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, ah, I get canceled. I'm done. Um, wow. Okay, I once got um, shot in the back of my neck by a paintball gun. I went to a paintball <gasps> birthday party, Ooh. and we were standing in a group getting ready. We were, we were being taught, you know, all the rules and what not to do, and all of a sudden, just a searing pain directly like my like I want to say like my C4 which is kind of not doing so great these days I wonder if there's any connection there your um, C4 my C4 it's like the fourth vertebra of your neck I'm wow, literally you, a doctor you're you hear a me? doctor do you hear me I'm a doctor call in I will help you <laughs> I'm so sick of these doctors I'm the doctor Dr. Goldstein Dang, I should have just gone to you with all my troubles. You should. Do you I know what's wrong with my butt? I would. I would have. I would have taken the bag of milk teeth from your mom, and I would have got a hot glue gun. <laughs> and honey, you'd have real teeth. <laughs> my mom was trying to. I. I mean, we were trying to like fashion them together to see if we could still make the full. T anyway, let's move on from that story. <gasps> that is so what? Okay, so um, I'm 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 in a clump of kids waiting to go in uh for the the paintball party and. Bam, on the back of my neck. Right in the C4. Right on the C4. And um, they were like so apologetic. It was an accident. And I was telling this story um, to a friend of mine recently. And in like real time, telling the story for like the 15th time in my life, I, it dawned on me that it was not an accident. <laughs> it's like they did it on purpose. They're what kind for of accident? Sure. Yeah. How, how, how do you accidentally... <laughs> like it was fully on purpose and i just what a sweet kid huh to get shot in the back of the neck be lied to the front of your face and then to just completely take that at face value just go no yeah he didn't mean it he you believed in it. something and that's Aww, good and that's yeah. important and i love that about you i don't don't get down on little jared i want to get down on little those two kids names who i remember and i won't say <laughs> I have a similar story. I went to a lot of church camp. Oh. Uh, oh. And we don't need to get into that. 
<laughs> but keep it light, keep it light. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there was paintball at church camp, and it was like full, like huge in the woods, like forts built and everything. But anyway, there was this one kid, Eric, who I was really good friends with, and there was a rule like you're not supposed to shoot the paintball gun if you're like close to someone, and he just let it rip onto my hand, and I was as soon as okay. That church camp needs to be shut down because I guarantee that's the sure. that's the that is the least problematic thing that happened that summer at that camp. <laughs> Certainly, as soon as you as a, as a supervisor are handing kids guns of any kind, you fucked up. You've done it wrong. And you they should did it never wrong be repeatedly. handing a kid a gun. Maybe, maybe a Nerf gun. Even that. Just pick a different activity. Yeah. Pick a different activity. Water balloons. Water right. balloons. Hello. You want okay. that rush? Okay. Fill a balloon with water. Throw it at your friend. You're water right balloons. Yeah. Actually, we're solving the world. Yes. <coughs> I'm so sorry, listener. And again, do join the Patreon. Do do join and let me know if you if you want the burps to stop. And if you are a member of the Patreon. Honey, you'll never hear another one again. That's the top tier, though. <laughs> I bleep out the burps. The hundred dollar tier is for if you want the podcast with the burps that it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or for two hundred dollars, it's just the burps. <laughs> it's a super cut of the burps. <laughs> that sounds a lot like the Patreons I'm already subscribed to. I didn't even know that that was a thing for Patreon. What do you mean? Like, uh, sort of a an enjoyment Patreon, if you will. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, what other type of Patreon is there? I guess it was. I guess I just thought it was for podcasts, right? And like rappers. For oh, do people put music out on Patreon? Maybe. Okay, great. I actually the the real truth and nothing but the truth is that I'm subscribed to podcasts on Patreon. Beautiful. Yeah. Do you want to name them? Sure. I listen to Two Dykes and a Mic. Oh, with fun! Rachel Scanlon and Mackenzie Goodwin. Yeah, love them. Love Lovely them so people. much. Love the podcast. And then finally. The pod. It's Grace Kuhlenschmidt and Joe Castle Baker. Yes. And and my mom is calling, so I'm just going to take this, while, but but keep going. So, I, and hey. then the last one is um, some straight fellow. Uh, I, am, I am totally fine. Curtis I just wasn't Connor, texting Connor, very, really good. It's important to um, no, no, I am, appreciate um, recording the straight my podcast community. Right now. Uh, okay, bye. It is Pride Month, and I feel like that's the most important time to give back to the straight community. I love Pride Month. Because we're getting all this attention, and it's like not fair in many ways. Yes. So what did I miss? How's your mom? That was my mom. She was being a bitch again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, she's so sweet. Um, I didn't text her back, so she called me. She's like, are you okay? She did text me, you okay, like right before we were starting. And I saw it, and I was like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And then um, if you don't text your mom back when she asks you if you're okay, you will get a phone call. Well, you're dead. If yeah. You, yeah. At that point, yeah. At that point, you're dead. Which is, yeah, I, I'll pick it up. I started using a new wallet mm. because I keep my key in my wallet. Adorkable. <laughs> quirky girl. That's very quirky. I keep. I actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't have a wallet. I don't use a wallet. Okay, now now you're a quirky girl. I'm a quirky girl. Why don't you have a wallet? Um, well, because whenever I go places, I just keep my eyes on the ground to see if I can find shiny coins, and then I just use that. Okay. No, I'm kidding. My phone. Um, my phone is my wallet. I have this little thing. Whoa! And and sh and show the credit card and the numbers. <laughs> was actually, to the I was like, wait a second. <laughs> Uh, Wells Fargo. Did you get that? It was Wells Fargo. <laughs> Finn yeah, so Argus Well Fargo. We're just, halfway there. <laughs> I have my cards. We're going to rewind. Case. We're going we're gonna to get the Social Security, which was on your chest. Wow, we, this is a we, treasure trove. Yeah. You're welcome. I did. I actually didn't come here to give advice. I just came, came here, here to, to give out your identity. PIN number. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to get frauded. <laughs> um, what were we talking about? Uh, oh, you were saying the podcast that you listen to and, and follow on Patreon. Oh, yeah. That and was because it. it's September of 2024, uh, another podcast you follow on Patreon is. Sorry, sorry what? You're a sorry, 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 what? Sorry, sorry, what? Sorry, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> no, you nailed it. Sorry, That's every sorry, you, Jared. It's called Sorry, What? Listening. And it's starring Jared. And featuring Finn artists. No lies detected. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, shall we take our um, final voicemail? You can say no. 
Um, if you have something you want to get off your chest before we do. I'm ready. You're I just ready? really hope it's not medical. I kind of want some like fun relationship advice stuff. Okay. I know for a fact that, that it's, it's not medical. medical. Oh, it's not medical. It's okay. not. I, I think I think it should have been because that would have been a sort great kind of theme. of theme for the episode. Um, but uh, I also... theme for my day. I woke up at seven in the morning to go to the doctor's office. You did? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, I've been at the doctor's for... Anyway, we don't need to get into my medical history, okay, you guys? But Jeez. we can get into getting up at 7 in the morning because yeah. I recently had to get up at 7 in the morning to be at an audition by 8. Oh, an 8 a.m. audition? Isn't that crazy? Well, that's violent is what it is. Yeah. What was the audition for? I can't talk about it. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. Well, that was fun. Uh, yeah. Sort of move on then? <laughs> yeah, I woke up at I, 7. Okay, fine. I'm running for, for president. <gasps> what? Twenty twenty. Are they having an open cast? Four. Yes. How come my agents didn't send me that? <laughs> yeah. Um, That's weird. Yeah, but I had to be there really early, and it was it was hard. Also, I was having trouble sleeping because of my meet me. Um, and that of your my shoulder shirt, your and it, yeah, shirt. <laughs> yeah, my shirt was just so bright and loud. <laughs> just couldn't it kept stop. waking me up. Oh my god, what um, is that? Yeah, I couldn't sleep, and then I woke up, and it just felt like knives. You know, when waking up just oh, feels like no. knives. And also, like nowadays, like we're, I'm not in high school anymore because uh, I'm in college. Um, and it's just I don't often have that feeling of waking up and being like, ow, ow, ow. Also, if anyone wants to hire me as an actor. You know, call times, you'll wake up going ow, ow, ow. But I also haven't been, uh, been hiring lately. So I'm waking up normally feeling pretty okay. And I woke up just feeling so raw for the first time since like 1995. Mm. And it was tough. And then you have to go to a building and then try to present a pretty charming, energetic version of yourself. That's not right. It was. That ain't right. <sighs> that ain't right. Man. I'm. Pretty staunchly against waking up early, um, if I have the if I have the choice. But yeah, yeah but for then acting, also literally you're an actor. Yeah, with acting it's always like the well, I guess it depends, but early call yeah. times. And it's also the crazy thing too. It's like we're the latest to show up. We're the last to show up. I know. And it's so early. Yeah, yeah. My brain and body really has to adjust before and after shooting something. But when I was a kid, like when I was in high school. I had like the uh, velvet rage, and so I did every single extracurricular possible. Okay, yeah. So I would wake up at four thirty every morning. Yeah. Do band, orchestra, cross country, or whatever. Yeah. And then do so much school, and then do homework all night. I would get probably th three hours of sleep every night for years. Girl boss. Girl boss. Hustle culture. I got. You're in a nice by seventeen. <laughs> 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 so now I'm overcorrecting and I sleep until noon every day. That's amazing. Unless and I'm working. Yeah, we got. It's just why not? If we can, let's do it. It's a privilege, and people are gonna. Our people are gonna make little comments at eleven forty-five about the sound of your voice or oh, morning, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Haters, jealous. Pay them no mind. But can I say though about um. The Velvet Rage. Mm -hmm. um, it's a book that I read and that I enjoyed and that I um, promote. <laughs> also, are you serious? I well, I'll say this: a lot of typos. Did you notice this? <laughs> yes. You notice it? <laughs> yes. It's not just my copy. There no, are so many typos in that book. Who was the editor on that? I literally like, okay, so if anyone doesn't know, The Velvet Rage is, I guess, essentially like a gay self-help book. It's like mm -hmm. a theory about homophobia, internalized homophobia, and how to like get yourself out from underneath it. It's a pretty famous book, and I, the first typo I found, and they're big typos. They're not little grammatical typos. Like, it'll be like, and, and. Like, big <laughs> ass know, typos. Oh my God, it's straight up, I bet it's a series of unfortunate events type riddle. If we go through and circle it all the typos. It has to be something because the fact that it's literally a self-help book filled with typos, <laughs> I'm like, at what? Like, we're supposed to take this seriously? Um, he but wasn't getting his eight hours. I after, I, after I found the first one, I was like, I was running. I had the zoomies. I was running in circles. Like, oh, my God. I just won the lottery. I found a typo in a published book. This mm -hmm. is, I found a four-leaf clover. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kill the leprechaun and Jennifer Aniston and I will live. Because I found the four leaf clover, and that's a movie that you know, and just totally you know what I'm talking about. Yep. Um, and Rocco, do you know the movie? I do not. Damn, it's called Leprechaun. 
It was the it was the first big movie Jennifer Aniston was in. Dang. It was a horror movie about a leprechaun, and it's very scary. The leprechaun is very scary looking. Well, I'm Irish, so I don't know that one. Oh, oh, it's it's actually extremely offensive to yeah. your people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sorry. Yeah, really funny that you brought that up. Actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really cool. That's what I brought you here to kind of kind of create. Really cool. <laughs> um, Love but, luck of the Irish. Now that is Irish representation at its finest. Is that Lindsay Lohan? I don't think so. <laughs> I okay. think it's and now I really I think it's canceled. like a teenage <laughs> I'm <just> boy. <laughs> I'm guessing Irish people. Is she even Irish? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, what, which one was Luck of the Irish? Luck of the Irish was this kid. He like turns 13 and then he starts turning into a leprechaun. Oh, and okay. He's like, it, it gets pointy ears and um, starts shrinking. Again, different time, different time. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> figures out that he's like half leprechaun and it's, it's a whole thing. I'm half Asian. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy that they didn't make a movie about you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I want an early 2000s decom that's just about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was called, it was the snowboarding one. Which one was that? I don't remember. It's Johnny Tsunami. Oh, Johnny Tsunami. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Snowboarding? I thought that was a surfing movie. It might have been. Is there a snowboarding? Maybe there's a snowboarding. I, there might have been too. a sequel where it's like they go, how do we reinvent surfboarding? I know. <gasps> Winter Snow. version. <laughs> Snow. And then they can make it a Christmas movie too. Yeah. Oh my God. Geniuses. Uh, Truly geniuses. I mean, Disney, those movies, Cheetah Girls. Ooh. I've been thinking a lot about Cheetah Girls. They so. are. <laughs> <laughs> I bit my boomp on this like at least once an episode. <laughs> Um, yeah, AR, I'm going to need fake teeth pretty soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, Cheetah Girls was really good. And honestly, Cheetah Girls 2 was not terrible. Cheetah Girls 2 was good. Some of those movies I'm going to go ahead and say bad. that. Some the of those decoms? Movies, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Some of them were tough. <laughs> yeah. You say that like it's a revelation. <laughs> Guys, I hate to say it. Disney Channel put out some subpar movies. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, of course. But Cheetah Girls, great. Lizzie <sighs> McGuire movie. I you know, die on can that I just hoe. say, Uh-oh. and feel free to shoot me with a gun, I never really cared about Lizzie McGuire. Well, I didn't really care for the TV show, but the movie? I mean, did you see it? She goes to I, Italy. I've seen it, but I didn't love. like, I don't remember it. And like, I didn't see the whole thing. And I have fond memories of like mm. being at home and like, the commercials for like leading up to it coming out and it's the summer and then it comes on and like, yeah, I remember it, but I don't, it, uh, they really, it was just cheetah girls for me. I it think was just cheetah Raven girls. really, they, they really, Disney really found a talent there. Yeah. And you know what I rewatched recently what? that actually was really good. Well, okay. Maybe <laughs> this wasn't twitches. Do you remember Twitches? I do, and I'd, I'd never seen it. Is it Twin Witches? It's Twin Witches. Okay. Yeah. Tia and Tamara Mari. Oh, fun. Yeah. yeah. It's great. It's, it's great. a good one. It's a, great, it's a Halloween classic. I watched uh, the first half of Free Willy on a flight recently. Oh, no. Yeah. I have really terrible associations with that movie. Do you? Yeah. What is that, Was that the day you got shot in the face? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> You've I, literally been shot in the face. I've been shot in the face with an airsoft gun, but yeah. You don't have to say that. You can just say, like, okay, I recently rear-ended a school bus. There were no kids on it, but I don't say that. <laughs> I just say I rear-ended a school bus, and I let everyone just kind of... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Just something um, like a shot okay. in the face. I like that. I've got sh- I got shot in the face. But uh no, the Free Willy Association was I was in Florida with my parents. My family. Who were you really <laughs> with? <laughs> <laughs> um it was a family trip and we went to Universal Studios and I remember we were about to walk into the place where you could get green eggs and ham. That uh-huh. was like a restaurant where that's all they served pretty much. Oh, what was it? It was like a Dr. Seuss restaurant? Uh huh. In Universal Studios. Oh, okay. See, I yeah. wasn't listening to that key element of the story. That's your job. I know. Well, here it's a you know I'm a bad listener. It's real. Yeah. Um, there. Anyway, I'll I'll cut to the chase. There were three hurricanes that we could literally see on the horizon. So they evacuated the whole park, and our whole <laughs> our whole like fun family amusement park vacation got they get derailed. Up the thing, they're like JK JK. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're like, sorry, we're going to have to hold the ham, hold the <laughs> ham, evacuate the premises. And everyone was running. It was a panic. 
Whoa. And there were three physical hurricanes, one of which we could what see. What does a hurricane our, look like? Just a big gray cloud coming? Pretty much, yeah. Just like a, a, a dark mass of, of wind and cloud that um, was you know, just the wind was whipping everywhere. And I was pretty stoked about it at the time. Yeah. When you're a kid, it's exciting. Yeah. Cause there was like, you know, lightning and cause like you, thunder. you know, you're basically going to be fine, but your parents are nervous and you're like, Whoa, like, well, I just assumed we would be fine. Cause I didn't have uh, a concept of like actual consequences, yes. but my parents were concerned and we ran back to the hotel and had to like put cushions over the windows. And, uh, then we watched free Willy while branches like whipped into the side of the building and it was sounds like <laughs> a nice memory i'll be honest no it was cute um yeah. i wasn't so scared but i just remember like my parents were and then the next day uh-huh. we went to the only restaurant that was open which was mcdonald's and the big arch you know like the pole was it blown arch, over whoop. so we had to drive around the arch to get to the mcdonald's drive this is in illinois in florida Oh, okay. <laughs> there's that listening again. Yeah. In Florida. Okay. Where there are lots of hurricanes. That makes sense. Yeah. So that's my free <laughs> Willy. I, <laughs> but it was a great movie. I was like, so you were at Disney World <laughs> with your adopted parents. <laughs> yeah. Let's do a quick recap. And a recap. tornado came. <laughs> so you couldn't eat your red eggs. Um, <laughs> did you ever get the green eggs and ham? No. To you this didn't day. Get them. Never tried them. That's and, for the best. No. Know, well, so I'm, I bet probably at this point I was pretty bummed as a kid, but I now I don't eat eggs. So, I bet how would you make green eggs and ham? I guess you would just use like food dye, food dye, lots of it. I think it was probably scrambled. You eggs. could maybe use chlorophyll if you wanted to be chic. I'm trying to think how does like a chic version for adults happen. So definitely chlorophyll. I think, I think if because chlorophyll is basically like there's no flavor in chlorophyll. It doesn't taste like lettuce, and it's good for you and yeah. stuff. If you just dropped, if you made a fried egg, you didn't break the yolk, and you just dropped chlorophyll, would that work? I guess so. But I do, I feel uh, like it was. Uh, sorry. No, I mean, hey, you're getting tips on the Patreon. Oh, my like, God. <laughs> a dollar for per every burp. A dollar for burp, yeah. Okay. And anyway. again, these are medical burps. So if you are upset, you're, you're being ableist. Um, okay, should we take our last voicemail? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Hi, um, I bought two watches um, within a, like a year of each other, and both broke very quickly. Um, so I'm wondering what the is if there's something I'm doing wrong in terms of like how you keep a watch working, and also if, what's the best watch shop in LA to get my watches fixed. Thank you. Well, it's not medical. So you own a watch. I am wearing one. I see you looking. I You can't have it. I mean, it's gorgeous. And Thank I'm happy you. For you. I don't own a watch. Um, Can I just say? Brita. Great company. I've, I, I buy them myself, but if you buy enough and you tell them, they'll send you one. Oh, cool. They did send me one. This isn't the one they sent me, but... Hi, Brita. Okay, so you've sort of solved a listener's problem yeah. already. <laughs> yeah, They're problem solved. At Brita, you hop know, on over. You know what I would recommend? What? Get a, what are they called? A G-Shock? <gasps> Those things are indestructible. They are. <laughs> Those, and and you then you remember? know they make Baby G. Baby G, what is it's, that? That's like the mini version if you're mini. Oh, whoa. Yeah, they make G-Shock. That's good to know because yeah. I'm famously the size of a quarter. Yes. But in post, they have blown they, you up. They blow you up. Yeah. Size, yeah. <laughs> That's why this isn't going to come out for months because yeah, there's a lot a of lot. post-production. We're sending it to the Imagineers and, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they're going to they're gonna make it happen. Yeah. Um, okay. So I am wearing a watch. I wear watches. They often don't work. This one doesn't work. Um, so it's decor. Yeah. I mean, the thing about it is like if... If I, if I wanted to look at my watch to tell me the time, I would have to look away from my phone first, which tells me the time. Mm, you'd have to tear your eyes away. Yeah. So I'm like, I know what time it is, and I don't need this to tell me the time. It's nice when it, when it tells me the time, but eventually, like, it does die. Here, let me show you. It does. Okay, so let me get it nice and clean. In case the good people at Brita are watching, I want to do you right, you know? 
Okay, so this watch is clear. Um, and it does, there is like a, it does wind, but I don't think the winding does anything. I think it runs on a battery, but I don't know when it, when it, when it stops working, I just, I let it go to the universe. I go, we had a good run. It worked and now it doesn't. And again, I have a, I have a lot bigger problems. It's not hemorrhoids, but I have problems. I couldn't imagine replacing a battery in a watch. I, you'd have to drive to a, a pretty scary building first to get that. Are done. you serious? Uh, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I actually, I actually have brought this watch to a watch guy, and he's he's the opposite of scary. He's very sweet. He's a very sweet man. Um, but yeah, you know, you have to go to one of those kind of hole in the wall, like it's a watch slash shoe repair. It's like usually like an Italian guy or some kind of like European man, and he's got like a. You know, he's got a shirt kind of like this on sometimes. Oh. Um, and and he just has like a stash of watch batteries? Yeah, literally. And, and watch like um, uh, like bands and, and just watches. And then, you know, we'll kind of fix your watch. But like, you know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an interesting experience because it's like, you know, it's the opposite of like using Blue Apron. You know? What is that? Blue Apron. Uh -huh. it's, like a, it's, like a, it's like a meal service. Oh, okay. You, you've never heard of Blue Apron? No. You're entering the podcast space, babe. <laughs> I'm You're really a lot. embarrassing yourself. <laughs> um, Wait, is Blue Apron like a common? Or it's thing like the or? opposite of using like um, DoorDash. Like got you, it. you go to this like you know old building. You talk to this man, and he 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 fixes it, but he doesn't exactly even tell you as it's happening. You're kind of like he kind of just walks into another room for a while. He comes back. He's got like a little thing, mm. and he's working on it, and then. And then usually it costs, like the thing that, the, the service that you are like receiving is usually like, it, it doesn't take very long and the part is like the tiniest little piece of metal. So then they kind of just make up the price at the end. Yeah. Anywhere between five and $10. Sometimes they don't charge you oh, at really? all. Yeah. It's like, it's really fun. It's fun when you're oh, watching. Yeah. It is fun to go bring your watch to get like worked on because it is sort of like, it's, you're kind of like in a little play. That's that. the type of errand I could get into. Yeah, for those like fifteen minutes, you're you're in a play, because you're mm. like, this doesn't have to be happening. Yeah, but there is a man who actually does know how to fix this and has the tools. That reminds do me of when I had this obsession with old TVs and camcorders. And yeah, like old gaming consoles. Uh huh. It was during lockdown. I uh, yeah. Earned, like I guess a little after lockdown, but um. I this got is when all you were these in prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I had this obsession with old technology and so then I at first was bringing them to places where they would fix it cuz I would just find it at Goodwill and it'd be broken. Yeah. Um so there was this one place in uh I don't know somewhere in the east side um mm -hmm. Vegas I think. It, was, it must have been Vegas yeah. and I rolled up to this warehouse where there's just all these old TVs stacked against the walls. Some of them were playing stuff. It was uh, it was a little creepy, but then they were so nice, and they would take my TV away without saying anything and give me a piece of paper, and then I was like, oh, okay. And then I'd just be on my merry way. And they would get your TV working? Yeah. And then wow. I'd come back, and it would just be, you know, working at... Oh, what man. would an old TV even play? Is I that crazy to ask? I have a VHS collection. Okay. Yeah. So okay. that was, it was a TV that had a VCR like in, in the TV. Gotcha. So I was going there to get the VCR working. I remember when I was a kid and I got my own TV. It was a cool day. Yeah. It was black and it was, it looked like a computer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I that's kind of like the one that I have. It looks like a, like an Apple, you know, like a yeah. round, yeah. chunky God, that was a cool computer. The they Apple should like, one? yeah. They should just bring that back, but with the new computer inside of it. I want some size. I'll be honest. I want some shape and size when it comes people to my computer. I think people would enjoy that. Yeah. Like, I want some inconvenience. Bring back inconvenience. Right. Yeah. Like if I could have a clear and orange computer. Oh. Why haven't they brought that back? My God, I want my phone to be the size of a brick. <laughs> yeah. I do not want it to be able to fit in my pocket. I want to, have you ever seen, this is, actually, I feel like this reference is going to go nowhere, but okay. the Barbie Epcot movie, 
Oh no. But no, walk, walk me through the whole thing. I keep thing. on bringing this up to people. No one knows what I'm talking about, but it's, I had this on VHS. It was a pink VHS and it was these two divas. They must've been like 12 or 13 and they get invited to Epcot by Barbie. Okay. To see the new Barbie live musical. This sounds like a horror movie. <laughs> You're like, these two little <laughs> children were tricked into going to Disney. I feel like if you watched it now, it would feel a little like just like a dateline, <laughs> like creepy. <laughs> um, but I loved watching it. And anyway, they had this huge, chunky pink brick of a phone that it oh. pulled the antenna up and be like, hey, Barbie. And I wanted one of those so, so bad. So bad. And if I could find one on eBay, I would switch out my iPhone for that. I, when I was a kid, it, it did not make sense, but I did want a beeper. A beeper. A beeper. Yeah. And it, when people held up the beeper like that to read it, that like the <laughs> just. Ooh. How do they work? There's just like one message. It's words, right? Uh, yeah. I honestly don't know because here's the thing. I, <laughs> my parents got me a beeper. It was like a Motorola beeper. It was clear blue. It had like a green button on it, and I never used it once because I was a child and I didn't <laughs> need to get beat. Yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't a surgeon. <laughs> yeah, you know. I feel you. I begged my parents for a BlackBerry. You did. <laughs> my dad had a BlackBerry, and I would always steal his phone to play Brick Breaker. Yeah. And I wanted one so bad. I never got one. But when I was uh, like the uh, twenty or something, I got one for Christmas from my partner oh. <laughs> at the time and it was the sweetest gift ever and i used that blackberry for a solid year before um i had to switch well no it was that was when lockdown started and i was like i need social media and they took your phone I need it back <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and people in cloaks showed up at my door and they said where's the blackberry <laughs> yeah it was a horrifying day it was the most traumatic day of my life aside from getting my teeth shot out oh my god um, I also really wanted a sidekick, a T-Mobile sidekick. <laughs> I just imagined a miniature version of you <laughs> with a cape on. Yeah. No, okay, yeah, yeah a sidekick. Yeah, sort of a backpack for Dora. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I wanted the phone, a T-Mobile sidekick. Um, and again, my sweet, sweet parents, they were like, we'll get you one. And I was like, no, I want to want one. I don't want it. I want to want one. Mm. And I didn't let them buy me one because I just wanted to want it. Tell me about and every it. Time That's I me saw... getting into relationships. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Some, some wires got crossed. Yeah. I just wanted to want this. <laughs> but now no! it's too real. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. Oh, I feel like a tomato. <laughs> <laughs> like a tomato. Yeah, I really well, just revealed red. myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's too real. Well, I think Sorry that... to all the... Sorry, sorry to all the men that I've dated in the past two years. And sorry to all the women that I've dated. <laughs> I don't know why that caller thinks I'm gay. What the fuck? Yeah, that was really strange. Not me. It, it was probably the shirt. I think I know what's keeping you up I at think night, Jared. I think this is a good place to end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to plug anything, like a music album? Yes. Uh, so I'm releasing music under my own name, Finn Argus, and uh, it's called Running With Scissors. And it's my first time putting out music in a while, very close to my heart. And I'm super proud of it. So if it isn't out yet, it will be out very soon. So go hit me up on Spotify. And then also check out my podcast, One of Us with Chris Renfro which will undoubtedly have Jared on at some point. Yes. And he will either become one of our best friend force or our sworn enemy. Yes. And I can't wait to figure out which one it is. And you have to tune in to find out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for having me, Jared. This is great. And uh, you're welcome to everyone uh, for, you know, sort, sort of bestowing our wisdom. Tonight. 100%. And, and I, do, I would love it if you would stick around for just about 10 more minutes to do a little Patreon talk. Copy that. Okay, but thank you for listening. Um, this see has you been. Freebies. What's that? I said, see you freebies. Better go get on the Patreon. Oh, to hear I us see. Burp. I see. Again, I was like, I don't know. I don't know what they're talking about. So just <laughs> look here. <laughs> thank you for being Sorry, here. Look at me. Sorry, <laughs> no, 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 no. Stop. No, no, no. You look at me. So sort of look, you at, look me at me now. <laughs> I'll see you on the Patreon. Okay. okay? Bye, honey. Bye. And that was it. That was the best I could do. That's Finally. all I have. Oh, I can take my panties off. <laughs> yeah, get them off.